and today I'm going to tell you about all the books that I read in December. I read 19 books in December. I read two classics, six graphic novels, one middle grade, three picture books, three nonfiction, and four activity books. So first we're going to get started with what everybody wants to hear about, which is the classics. Before I jump in though, please do make sure that you have subscribed to this channel and go ahead and click that like button if you enjoy this video. Every year in December, I love to reread The Bird's Christmas Carol by Kate Douglas Wiggin. This is a short and sweet little story about a little girl who is very ill, but she wants to spend all her Christmas money to throw a big Christmas party and a dinner for the poor children who live next door. There's like eight of these little poor children and they're all so hilarious and funny and each one is unique. This whole family is just so interesting and the whole story is really sweet and heartbreaking and hilarious. Every time I reread it, I'm just giggling and laughing and I love it. And then of course I read Emma by Charlotte Bronte. So this is not Emma by Jane Austen. This is a different thing. <laughs> Before Charlotte Bronte died, she wrote two chapters of this book and then unfortunately she passed away and was never able to finish it. But this is a version that has been continued and finished by another lady. I'm usually pretty skeptical about modern authors that try to finish a classic writer's work, but this one was pretty well done. The writing style doesn't exactly mimic Charlotte Bronte's writing, but it does a pretty decent job. The big thing that I felt like really mimicked Charlotte Bronte's style was the themes and the basic plot structure. There's that gothic moodiness and plot twists. There's the wild scenery and of course the complex and compelling characters that you would expect to find in a Bronte novel. This story is about Mrs. Chalfont who adopts an abandoned child and she tries to figure out the mystery of the child's true identity. And then it is when the ruthless and evil Emma appears on the scene that Mrs. Chalfont has to save this innocent child. I loved the story so much. I was laughing and crying and clutching the book to my heart. The emotional power of this story is very reminiscent of Charlotte Bronte's style. However, I figured out the big plot reveal on like page 86 and it's not actually revealed until page 163. So that was a little disappointing, but even though I did figure it out early, I still enjoyed seeing it all unfold for these characters. I really loved the complex and powerful and emotional characters in this story. Mrs. Chalfont is such a sweet and lonesome character. It's like she's hiding this internal anguish that she's been through in her life, but she's so kind and generous to everyone. And of course the elusive Emma, even though she is the titular character, she only appears in one scene in the entire book. The story is all about how her anger and hatred has affected everyone around her. We see people's reactions when her name is mentioned. We see how the county gossips about her. We see how her family tries to make excuses for her. She is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Overall, I enjoyed this book so much. I gave it four out of five stars. I just took off that one star because the prose doesn't quite match Charlotte Bronte's prose. And then because I figured out the big reveal too early. Now let's take a look at some of the nonfiction that I read. The Apologetics Study Bible for Students, which has a lot of extra essays and ex explanatory footnotes and a glossary for archaic words. So this time reading through the Bible, I really enjoyed having all this extra stuff to enhance kind of your reading experience. Another cool thing is that they talk about um, archaeological digs that have proven the history that is shown in the Bible. So I thought that was really cool how they just incorporate all these different essays and history and, and all kind of nifty stuff um, that can really just kind of help you to understand what you're reading. And the one middle grade book that I read was the third book in the Larklight trilogy, moth storm. This is set in a steampunk Victorian era where the British Empire has expanded into space and they have territories in Mars and Venus and Saturn. But now a mysterious cloud is approaching the solar system from deep space. And of course only the brother and sister duo Arthur and Myrtle can save the British Empire. 
I loved everything about this book. I loved the entire trilogy, the plot, the characters, the world building, the mystery, the adventure, every single dramatic chapter. It was especially wonderful to see how the entire trilogy is wrapped up so nicely in this last book. I am just amazed at how incredibly imaginative the world building is. Every alien race has their own strange culture, their own economy and history and diseases. It's just such an interesting solar system. It's such a perfect backdrop for these wonderful adventures in space. The writing style is so humorous with this kind of dry, sarcastic writing style that I really love. The best thing is to see how some of the characters are trying so hard to be prim and proper Victorians, but they keep getting thrown into adventures where they can't follow the rules of society. I mean, they may be about to be blown to smithereens by pirates, but please let us not forget courtesy and decorum. <laughs> The whole book is just hilarious. The, the characters are so vivid and, and they're all so different. I really loved a lot of the character developments that some of the main characters went through, especially Myrtle. She goes through such a change and she begins to learn through the adventures that she's really stronger and more resourceful than she thought that she was. She doesn't have to faint every time a gun goes off. Maybe she'll pick up a gun. Maybe she'll defend herself instead of waiting for a Prince Charming to come and defend her. I loved this entire trilogy. I loved this perfect ending to the trilogy. I only wish there were more books in this series. I am definitely gonna be looking up more books by this author. I also read Too Good to Be False, How Jesus' Incomparable Character Reveals His Reality. If you examine Christ's life, his personality, his leadership style, the way he interacted with people, one thing becomes abundantly clear, he's just too good to be false. There has never been a human being who lived the way he did. And it would just be impossible to fictionalize and make up a story about a man like him. I really love that the writing is forceful and vivid and shows you logically each step in this argument to show that Jesus is truly God. The author writes with passion, but also just with this clarity that lays it all out for you. I really, really loved this book. It made it into my top favorite books of the year, and I gave it five stars. I also read a uh, Guitar, the World's Most Seductive Instrument. <laughs> I actually just read this so that then I could give it to my brother who got a guitar for Christmas. My parents got him the guitar, and then I got him a guitar book. So this shows um, gorgeous photos and information about hundreds of different types of guitars. And there are bios on the famous guitarists who played them. So there are people like Jimi Hendrix and Willie Nelson and B.B. King. The design is stunning. The photos are just exquisite. It made the perfect gift for my guitar loving brother. I read several graphic novels in December. I read Teen Titans Go Roll With It. This one is actually cute because the Teen Titans are playing like a D&D style game and they get kind of sucked into the game magically by a villain. I'm not gonna say who, cause spoilers, but the villain sort of traps them into this imaginary D&D world so that then the villain can go off and rob banks without the Teen Titans around. It was adorable and cute and hilarious. It's colorful, it's bright, it's interesting. I enjoyed it. I also read The Archimaniacs, which follows little baby Bruce Wayne. He's not even Batman yet. He's only like six years old or something. And he discovers that there is an apartment building full of young villains. But they're not villains yet. They're just teenagers and young kids. And we get to meet Poison Ivy and the Joker and Penguin. And they are not really evil yet. They just want to have fun. They're just kind of chaotic. And they invite little Bruce over for a pool party. And of course, adventures ensue. It's just hilarious and cute. I mean, if you're a Batman fan, then this will be such a fun one to read with your kids and kind of introduce them to that universe. I also read We Found a Monster, which is about a young man who, for some reason, monsters are attracted to him. He has a vampire in his attic. He has Frankenstein in his bedroom. He has little goblins underneath his bed. However, a new monster comes to town fleeing from an evil monster collecting villain. I actually thought this had some really good character development, some really fun plot twists, and just a, just a hilarious, fun style. I know I keep saying fun, but these are fun. <laughs> 
I also read the manga classic Anne of Green Gables. Now I can be very picky about Anne of Green Gables retellings or movie adaptations or anything like that because the Anne story is just so dear to my heart. I have reread the books dozens and dozens of times. So I came into this with a little bit of trepidation, not quite sure what I was going to find, and I was so pleasantly surprised. I should have known though, because I've read other books from the manga classic series, and they're always well done. They are always so beautifully put together, so I should have known that of course they would do justice to one of my favorite stories. Condensing such a complex and emotional story into a manga form works really well here, and the plot follows the books so closely that most of the dialogue is actually taken directly from the original story. I love the artwork so much. I mean, there are just beautiful panels that draw you right into the story. I just love the designs of the characters. Like, it's just so true to the original vision. I just, oh, so wonderful. I also read The Inkberg Enigma. This graphic novel is about a young man who is very bookish. I think it's Miro or Myro or something. But he lives in a fishing village where there is a mystery. There are strange occurrences in town and the fishermen have secrets to hide. Miro's new friend Zia takes a photograph of a man who's been injured on a fishing vessel. They begin to investigate the weird phenomena around the town. I loved the characters, the interesting plot, the world building, the history of the town. It all came together into such a great story. I really liked that Miro or Myro is a bookworm. He just spends his whole life reading and collecting books. But he never wants to have any real adventures of his own until Zia comes around. The plot can be a little bit predictable, but I didn't really care because I was just interested in seeing how it would all develop and how it would all play out. And of course, the artwork is fantastic. The panels tell the story clearly. There's this energetic action. The coloring does a wonderful way of, a, of enhancing the mood and showing the creepiness of the old fishing town. Each character is unique and expressive. The art is what really brings the suspense and the emotion into the story. I loved it, I gave it four stars. I read Alexandra and the Awful Awkward No Fun Truly Bad Dates, a picture book parody for adults. Alexandra decides to try a 30 dates in 30 days challenge and she meets some pretty awful people. <laughs> These truly bad dates are immature, and selfish and just downright gross. They leave her to pay the check and they mansplain and they lecture her. They stay on their phones through the entire date or they just don't show up to the date at all. The writing is hilarious with these clever little hashtags that are kind of scattered through the story. For anyone who has horror stories of some terrible dates, this will definitely ring true. And hopefully it will help you to kind of laugh off those bad times with the same kind of carefree and courageous attitude that Alexandra has. I loved everything about this book and I gave it five stars. And then for the picture books, I read Robo Baby. Cathode is a robot who is about to become a big sister when her parents have ordered a new robot baby. The baby arrives in the mail but requires some assembly. Mother tries to put the baby together and father tries to read the instructions, but they can't get the gears to attach to the clockwork to get the baby to function. The cuteness level in this book is through the roof. The story is so clever and original and all the little robot people are just so fun and sweet. There's Uncle Manny who tries to help. The neighbor brings her little twins over to meet the baby. And of course, Sprocket the dog is gonna be the one to help big sister Kathy. The world building is so brilliant. Like they have sludge cake and they have rust soup. <laughs> the robots call for tech support during the crisis and so more robots come in to try to fix the baby. I am just enchanted with everything about this hilarious picture book. It's just, I what a treasure, what an absolute treasure. I gave it five stars. I read two board books by Sandra Boynton. I read Your Nose and Perfect Piggies. Everything in Sandra Boynton's books is always cute and cuddly and silly and ridiculous. <laughs> 
I love the simple cartoony art style and every page is so bright and colorful to capture the attention of young toddlers. The best thing about these is the rhythm and the rhyme in the text. You can actually visit the publisher's website to see the actual music for these songs and be able to sing along. These are completely adorable. They both got five stars. So I also read, uh, reviewed some activity books or like, I don't know, can you call it red when it's, anyway, it's a thing, this, these are what they are. I read a guitar's wall calendar, which I then gave to my brother. This has different pictures of different types of guitars for each month, but the cool thing is that the calendar layout is actually the frets of a guitar. So, I mean, if you wanted to, you could like write yourself a little song on there as you check off the days or something. I just thought that was such a cool and clever design and I gave it five stars. I also read two paint by sticker books, the Music Icons one and the Unicorns and Magic one. Both of these are really cool. I have just fallen in love with these paint by sticker kind of things because it's so calming. Like it's so relaxing. You just find the little number for the sticker and you stick it on. You get to feel such a sense of accomplishment once you finish that design. I really love that the pages are perforated so you can tear it out of the book. I love the clever designs, the beautiful colors, and the Unicorns and Magic one has glitter stickers to add to the fantasy. Both of these got five stars. And I also reviewed the Star Wars Origami 2. This one is entitled The Fold Awakens. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's such a clever title. This kit has everything you need to create an origami Star Wars galaxy of your own. There are pre-printed papers with all the designs on them and the book has very clear instructions for each fold. So you can create 34 characters and spaceships and helmets and all kinds of cool stuff. Lightsabers and robots. Let's see, there are designs for BB-8 and Darth Vader and Finn and Lando Calrissian, pod racers, A-Wing and U-Wing fighters, and a TIE striker. There's even Kylo Ren's mask. And each design has really beautiful details that make it really special. I'm just very impressed with this. You can do one of the simpler designs if you're doing it with the kids, or you can go for one of the more complex designs if you're ready for a challenge. But the coolest thing about this book is that there are some little quizzes and um, trivia questions and stuff that are peppered throughout the book so you can test your Star Wars knowledge. I gave this book to my brother for Christmas because he is obsessed with Star Wars and we did some of the origami together as we were watching Christmas movies and it was just so much fun to share that together and do it together and it was wonderful. And those are the books that I read in December. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what were some of your favorite books that you read this past month. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.